It's Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribe feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, First in television. And now, here we go, friends, to Duffy's Tavern with Arthur Treacher, Bert Gordon as the Mad Russian, Hazel Sherman as Miss Duffy, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet the eat. Archie the man just speaking. Duffy ain't here. Hello, Duffy. Say, Duffy, Mrs. Callahan just called, and she wants you to return Callahan's striped pants. You know, the, the ones that you wore St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, she says he needs them right away for a funeral. Whose? His. <laughs> what? The trousers split? <laughs> Where? Yeah. <laughs> Fifth Avenue. <laughs> well, look, why don't you return them anyway? The position Callahan's going to be in at that funeral, the split ain't going to show. <laughs> Incidentally, Duffy, a new inspector from the health department was in today. Yeah, new guy. Well, you know, these days when the health department sends a man to Duffy's Tavern, they ask for volunteers. <laughs> well, he picked on everything, you know. The rice pudding was all wrong just because a couple of raisins tried to fly out. <laughs> yeah. Everything was wrong. The way he wrapped the joint, you'd think he was a customer. <laughs> the only thing he complimented us on was our garbage. <laughs> and even that I didn't take as too much of a compliment to he was looking into our icebox when he said it. <laughs> but the last laugh was on him. Well, you see, he started complaining about our creaky floorboards when suddenly the creaking stopped. It was a hole about six feet wide. <laughs> huh? Was the inspector hurt? Well, no, he wasn't. Now, fortunately, the dirt in the cellar was piled so high that it broke his fall. <laughs> Well, it ain't our fault, Duffy. They shouldn't have such heavy inspectors. <laughs> well, uh, Treacher's fixing up the damage now. I'll call you later, Duffy. Say, Treacher, uh, Treacher, we got to fix up that hole in the floor. Oh, why bother fixing it? There are 15 others. I think it'll be more sporting to just leave it there. What do you mean, more sporting? Well, it's our 16th hole. <laughs> Two more and we can play golf. <laughs> By the way, what shall I do with these old papers I found under the floorboard? What old papers? Oh, yeah, them are some old mementos that I hid away one time. Let me look at them. Oh, I'm glad we found these. Look, Treacher, I'm proud of this one. What is it? The original letter from the principal expelling me from PS4. <laughs> and look at this, another cherished possession of mine. My father gave me this for my sixth birthday. What is it? A marked deck of casino cards. <laughs> And, and look at this. What? Me World War citation from General Hershey. Telling me I got flat feet. <laughs> uh, was there any other papers down there? Oh, just this dusty old book. A book? Let me see it. Hey, that don't belong to me. Look at it. It's practically falling apart. It must have been down there a long time. What does it say there on the cover? I can hardly make it out. Personal diary and memoirs of Peter Stuyvesant, A.D. 1670. Treacher, do we know a Peter Stuyvesant? Well, I don't know him personally. Well, uh, maybe I'd better give the guy a ring and tell him we found his book. Hello, operator. I want A.D. 1670. <laughs> The number has been disconnected? <laughs> Wait a minute. 1670? Archie, that diary must have belonged to the original Peter Stuyvesant. It could be, yeah. The original Peter Stuyvesant. Uh, tell me, what was it he invented again, Treacher? <laughs> he wasn't an inventor. He was one of the first governors of New York. Oh, sure, I should have remembered. Back in school, autobiology was my best subject. <laughs> Let's see what it says here. Dear Diary, I, Governor of New Amsterdam, 
hereby proclaim the following laws which shall apply equally to all citizens, from the respectable burger down to the village idiot. How do you do? <laughs> well, it's the mad Russian. Hey, hey, Russian, look what we just found, an old diary. A what? A diary. Who died? <laughs> Nobody died. A diary's a book for people who like to talk to themselves but don't want nobody to hear what they're saying. Yeah. Oh, that kind of a diary. For years, my mother is keeping such a book. Your mother kept a diary? She is writing everything that happened to her. Really? For how long? Right up to the day I was born. Well, where did she stop then? She figured what else could happen to her. <laughs> Well, you cut out the nonsense. This book is very important. It was wrote by Peter Stuyvesant, the Dutchman that was the governor of New York. A Dutchman, the governor? Yeah. In a place big like New York, they can't find an American citizen? <laughs> Russian, please. He was the governor in the old days of New York. Or, oh. Or as it was then known, Maury Amsterdam. <laughs> See, uh, these Dutchmen all settled in New York. Uh, Peter Stuyvesant became governor. Henry Hudson sailed up the Hudson River. Why did Henry Hudson sail up the Hudson River? Well, I don't know. He was probably attracted by the similarity of names. <laughs> Anyways, uh, these Dutchmen finally got together and uh, bought New York for $24 and a string of beads. A string of beads? Yeah. One or two strands? I think it was two. Hmm. Those Indians were shop traders, you know. Yeah, well, anyways, uh, this bunch of Dutchmen. You see, Archie, huh? why are they calling them Dutchmen? Well, it's obvious. It's a nickname. They call a guy from France a Frenchman, don't they? That is correct. And why do they call a guy from England? An Englishman. Right, so naturally, if a guy's from Holland, they call him a... Russian, will you stop asking foolish questions? <laughs> How else can I get foolish answers? Pray, confuse me more. Well, you see, in the olden times, uh, New York was an island, see, uh, completely surrounded by explorers trying to find it. <laughs> the place in them days wasn't what it is today. You see, uh, uptown was downtown, and uh, downtown was over in Jersey. So where was Jersey? Uptown. Yeah, you'd never recognize the place. Uh, just trees and log cabins, you know. If you wanted to go up to the car barns in 52nd Street, there was no transportation. You had to walk. You couldn't take a subway. In them days, they didn't know a subway from a hole in the ground. In fact, the way most of the people traveled was by canoe. Canoe? Yeah. <laughs> you'd never get me one of those things. Why not? I could drown. So what? You can drown in a bathtub. You never get me one of those things either. <laughs> I say, Otep, I just had a thought about that diary of yours. Yeah, what? Well, a rare volume like that might be valuable. Why not try to sell it to a museum? Why they want with a book at a museum? Them dinosaurs can't read. <laughs> Nevertheless, they do display old books. That is true. I saw them when I was working at the museum. I don't know why it should surprise me, Russian, but you say you worked for a museum? Most of course. Uh, remember that time they sent out that expedition looking for the prehistoric man? You went out with them? No, I came back with them. <laughs> Russian, forget about the museum. Just take this diary over to Max's second-hand bookstore and see what he'll give you for it. That's all gonna do. Okay. Say, Archie. Yeah, Miss Duffy. I hear you found Stuyvesant's diary. Yeah. Was there anything intimate in it? <laughs> no. Didn't he say anything about his love affairs? No. You mean there wasn't any scandal in the whole diary? No. What a lousy governor he must have been. <laughs> Miss Duffy, the guy was in love with his own wife. What a lousy governor he must have been. 
Mr. Stuffy, that is why Stuyvesant was smart. Romance and diaries don't mix. What do you mean? Well, if a thing is worth remembering, it's too dangerous to write it down. <laughs> Besides, Stuyvesant probably didn't have no romance like you got in mind. In them days, women didn't think of doing the things that you dames do today. No, but I bet they would have done them if they had thought of them. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to see your diary sometime. Well, I happen to have it right here. I, oh. I just finished filling it out for tomorrow. You finished filling it out? <laughs> Miss Duffy, how can you write what's going to happen tomorrow? I'm going out with Herman. With him, nothing ever happens. <laughs> well, uh, hey, how about letting me read it? I should say not. Okay. A diary is a very personal thing. Okay, then I won't read it. Well, since you're dying to hear it. <laughs> I'll read you just a smattering. Okay, smatter me. Dear diary, shall I go to the dance tonight with Horace or Anthony? Horace is tall, dark, and handsome, but Anthony has more brains. On the other hand, Horace dances beautifully, but Anthony has more money. I guess I'll go with Sam. <laughs> Wait a minute, Miss Duffy. Why Sam? He asked me. <laughs> well, uh, let me, let me see that diary. Archie, please. Hey, come on, let me take just a little peek. Oh, get this, my darling, beloved Gregory. Archie, please, not that My one. heart throbs with tender passion. Archie, give me that book. Crush me in your arms and sear me with your burning kisses. You are mine, all mine, Gregory. Archie! And I don't care what Mrs. Peck thinks. <laughs> Archie, give me that book, and if you ever breathe a word of this to Tyrone Power. Miss Duffy, it'll be our secret. I give you my word, as man to man. <laughs> now, stop bothering me. We've got to fix up that hole where the inspector fell through the floor. Well, Archie, I'm back. Oh, good, Russian. Did you sell the book to Max's bookstore? Yes, he is giving me five dollars. Max gave you five bucks? Hey, did you hear that, Treacher? Yes, but if Max gave him five bucks, I'm sure it would be worth a great deal more to the museum. Hey, maybe you're right. Maybe I sold a mess of pottage for a lousy birthright. <laughs> Just a minute. Hello? Max? Look, about that Peter Stuyvesant diary, I want to buy it back. You already sold it. Hmm. You see, I told you that Peter Stuyvesant diary was valuable. Then what? I'll still sell it to the museum. How? I'll write a new one. <laughs> a new Peter Stuyvesant diary? But you'll be sued. They can't sue me. I'll protect myself. I'll just say, I, Peter Stuyvesant, declare that this is an authentic diary. And as such, bears no relation to any person's living or dead. <laughs> While Archie is rewriting the Peter Stuyvesant diary, let's listen to Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. Bob, do you realize we only have one thing in common? Hardly enough for a happy marriage, is it? <laughs> What's that, Bing? Chesterfields, of course. We both like them, we both sell them. And we'd better get to selling them now. You know, folks, better tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. How do you know they're mild? Well, you just make our mildness test. You buy them, open them up, and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke a Chesterfield. You'll know it's milder because it smokes milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So, always buy Chesterfield. Let's sum it up musically. Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always takes first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. Now, let me see. This is ye personal diary of I, Peter Stuyvesant. Wrote 300 years ago. <laughs> by me esteemed self. October ye 15th. Today, I took Pocahontas for a walk. Over the Brooklyn Bridge. Archie, I have a secret. What? There was no Brooklyn Bridge in those days. No? So how could they walk to Brooklyn over the water? He floated. He had a wooden leg, didn't he? <laughs> well, what about Pocahontas? She floated with him. She was a very chic Indian. She had wooden shoes. 
Teacher, this is going to be a great diary, and if the museum don't buy it, there'll be plenty of other people that will. Yes, no doubt. Just throw in a couple of horses and Republic pictures will snap at it. <laughs> By the way, have you called the museum yet? No, I'll give them a buzz now. Oh, museum? Lost and found department, please. Well, it concerns an old diary we just found. Oh, the head curator? Well, he's out. How about the assistant head curator? <laughs> well, if he ain't too busy curing heads, I'll talk to him. <laughs> Hello, curator. Uh, this is Archie. Uh, short for archaeologist. <laughs> Look, I just stumbled on the original Peter Stuyvesant diary down here at Duffy's Tavern. Uh, does it have the original Stuyvesant coat of arms? We'll have by the time it gets here. You read me mine. <laughs> yes, sir, the original coat of arms. You'll be right over? Okay. Preacher, uh, what would be a good coat of arms for that, uh, that Dutchman, that Peter Stuyvesant? Now, let me see. Now, what about two crossed wooden legs rampant? in a jar of hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Very amusing. Look, Treacher, don't scoff at me. This is a tough enough job as it is, you know, and writing this thing, I have to set history back 300 years. And, old boy, you're just the one to do it. <laughs> hey, I see what you've written so far. Well, yeah, of course, I'm only up to what the guy did on February 14, 1656. Now, let me see. Dear Daddy, held powwow today with Indians to protest their inhuman use of bows and arrows. They said they'd quit using bows and arrows if we'd quit using muskets and cannons. We will need strength and courage to deal with such barbarians. <laughs> However, we still have hope, as ye news has come, that ye pilgrims have arrived from ye Plymouth Rock. That's ye old English lingo that ye Dutch used to use, you know. Proceed ahead, Treacher. December the 2nd. It is bitter cold. Just ordered two tons of firewood. December the 3rd. Was introduced a quaint old custom of bundling. December the 4th. Cancelled order for firewood. <laughs> Great stuff, ain't it, Treacher? Now, uh, all I'll do is practice Peter Stuyvesant's signature. Archie. Yeah, Miss Duffy. Did you say Peter Stuyvesant? Yeah. You mean Patrick Stuyvesant. Patrick. Miss Duffy, the guy was a Dutchman. He was an Irishman. All great men are Irish. Oh, yeah? What about Napoleon? Napoleon? The guy from the Battle of Waterloo. Oh, him. Uh, did he win or lose? He lost. He was a Dutchman. <laughs> but look at the Irish generals. Name one. Patrick O'Henry. Well, of course, if you want to drag in a civil war, I was referring to the war between the states. So what? Patrick O'Henry fought in both of them? Well, if he was such a great general, how come he ain't buried in Grant's tomb? Who? Napoleon? No, that Irish general you were talking about. Archie, don't change the subject. <laughs> Patrick Stuyvesant was an Irishman. Then how do you explain his wooden leg? That was just a handy way to carry his shillelagh. <laughs> okay, so he was Irish. Now leave me finish me diary. <clears throat> Dear diary, Faith and Begara... Now she's got me doing it. Dear diary, a sad thing happened today. I passed peacefully away at the ripe old age of 81. <laughs> Signed, the late Peter Stuyvesant. <laughs> Well, I guess that does it. Now all we have to do is to make the book look old. Treacher, uh, what can we do to make this book look like a real antique? Well, let me see. Oh, I know. I'll take it into the kitchen and bake it in the oven. You think that'll do it? Of course. Anything that comes out of that kitchen looks old beyond its years. <laughs> No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, 
but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So, the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison, at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Oh, treat you. Yes? How's me diary doing in the oven? I beg to report, sir, that the diary is still half-baked. <laughs> well, get back to the kitchen and turn the oven up to a high broil. It's got to look good on old by the time the museum guy gets here. Archie, do you think for one minute that this official from the museum will be taken in by this nonsense? Why not? It'll be his word against mine, won't it? And his witnesses is just as dead as mine is. <laughs> I wouldn't be too sure, old boy. Some of that tribe is likely to bring them back from their graves. <laughs> You'll see, Treacher. Hey, wait a minute. I got another idea to make it look more authentic. What? Suppose we dig up one of Peter Stuyvesant's ancestors. Or even better, we'll dig up one of the Indians' ancestors. Oh, uh, Russian. Russian, come here. I hear you calling me. What can I do to you? Russian, how would you like to be an Indian? You read the newspapers. How would you like to be an Indian? Uh, no, no, this is just make-believe. And if you'll help me out and act like an Indian, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a free drink. A drink? Yeah. Can I have it with two squaws? <laughs> oh, cut out the bum puns, will you? Look, Russian, help me put this deal over and you can have as many squaws as you want. Now, how about it? Buy the shawls of Gitche Stand our wigwam, it's a hunya. <laughs> Indian talk. All right, Russian, it's a deal. Now, there's a guy coming here from the museum. I'm going to try and sell him a diary. Now, it's a psychopathic moment, see? You... <laughs> you stick a feather in your hair and come in with this book. Hey, wait a minute. Quick, duck. Here comes the guy now. Excuse me. Who is the gentleman with the Peter Stuyvesant diary? I, sir, am that he. <laughs> well, sir, I'm most anxious to see it. Okay, I'll call the guy that owns it. The guy that inherited from a long string of ancestors. Hey, Chief. Who? Oh. <laughs> you. Me? Yeah. How? <laughs> Chief, uh, this is the man from the museum. How? Chief, uh, I want you should give him diary to pale face. How? Well, just hand it to him. <laughs> Go ahead, give him the diary. Ugh. <laughs> Are you sure this man is an Indian? By the shores of Gitchigunya. Stand our wigwam, it's a hunya. <laughs> you know who lives there? Who? Mickey Runya. <laughs> oh, what an Indian. Uh, uh, look, uh, Professor, you, uh, you doubted he was an Indian, didn't you? See how silly you was? <laughs> okay, Chief, uh, give him the diary. Ugh. Hey, uh, Professor, the diary of Peter Stuyvesant. Ouch, it's, it's hot. You ain't kidding. Why do you think it was banned in Boston? <laughs> now, now take a good scrutiny out of Professor. It's absolutely genuine. Right, Chief? Heap. <laughs> Go ahead, take a look at it, Professor. This diary is genuine? Absolutely. Why, the ink is hardly dry. How about that, Chief? No heaven blotter in those days. <laughs> Can you doubt now that he's an Indian professor? Well, hang on. To further prove it's genuine, I'll have the Chief here read it to you. But I thought the Chief here couldn't speak English. The book's been in his family for generations, and he's memorized it. <laughs> Go ahead, Chief. Read him, diary him. Look. <clears throat> February 19th, went to ye burlesque to see Minnehaha. 
famous wampum dancer. <laughs> Was shocked to see how many throws harmonia around. <laughs> Uh, Chief, better lay off the spicy part. The fossil here don't look like the type. Okay. Uh, March 10th, 1492. Surrounded by Indians. Looks like we'll all be scalped. 1492? That date is wrong by about 200 years. Look, Professor, when a guy's about to be scalped, he ain't got time to be looking at no calendar. <laughs> Young man, this diary is a fraud. Completely untrue. Who? Oh, uh, <clears throat> Chief, answer that, will you? Oh, uh, how... Uh-huh. 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 Ugh. Who is it, Chief? Museum. They want them to talk to Pale Face Professor on nickel smoke signal. <laughs> Chief, these days, this is a 10-cent smoke signal. The museum wants you on the phone, Professor. Thank you. Hello? Yes? You found the genuine Stuyvesant diary at Max's bookstore? You bought it for $1,000? Ugh. I've been scalped. Yeah. <coughs> Holy cat, a thousand dollars, and all I got was five bucks. Well, good day, gentlemen. Treat you, treat you. If I ever get my hands on that guy again, I'm going to malfeast him. Who, the Russian? No, that crummy health inspector put that hole in the floor. On account of him, I just lost 995 bucks. <laughs> Here's a word from RCA Victor. Fill your life with a new magic world of fun. Enjoy yourself. Have a Highland fling. Yes, that's just what it is when you and your family start enjoying RCA Victor's new 17-inch television console, the Highland. It's fun. It's fine. And it'll be the favorite of your family. That's right. The most famous name in home entertainment, RCA Victor, now brings you the best in 17-inch television with a new Highland console. There's a lot we can say about the Highland, but you just have to see it with its remarkable pictures. Clear, bright, and steady. Its distinctive console cabinet, beautifully styled, beautifully finished, and priced to fit your family budget. Then you'll know why this is million-proof television. Now, over two million American families have tried, tested, and purchased RCA Victor television. Let your family in for a Highland fling with RCA Victor's exciting new Highland Television Console. See it at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. Well, listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's All-Star Festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you what every smoker wants. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Listen tomorrow evening for The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival. <laughs>